Buhari that he bore a solidarity message from President Idris Deby Ednu on the security situation in Nigeria. The message, he said, also contains words of encouragement for Nigerian troops now working hard to end terrorism and insurgency in the northern part of the country. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And now to Kagara, Niger State Governor Abubakar Saini Bello has attributed lack of adequate intelligence gathering as one of the major cause of degeneration of insecurity in some part of the country. The governor was stated this during a press briefing, however, reassured that the students and all orders in captivity will be rescued on hand. Usina Musa gives us the details now. Governor Abubakar Saini Bello says Government is interfacing with relevant stakeholders to ensure the safe return of the students and other abductees. Our utmost priority right now is to make sure we never go safe. That's exactly what we're going to do. He notes that movement of headers from one place to another is no longer viable because most of the cattle routes have been converted to farms as a result of the growing population. Hence, the need to include headers in government policies and programs. The village head, the world head, should be able to know people within their domain. They should be able to alert us when they see suspected people within their domain. The governor disclosed that government is proposing to dialogue with all Fulalis across the state. He was, however, quick to add that efforts are on for the construction of perimeter fencing in all public boarding schools across the state. Emena Hussain Musa, NT News. And the secretary to the government of Niger State, Ahmed Ibrahim Matani, has appealed to bandits across the state to lay down their arms and embrace dialogue and reconciliation for peace and security to prevail. Ahmed Matani made the play in Dusa Magaji, Mariga, local government area of the state during a peace dialogue with bandits and order commanders terrorizing the state. Calling on criminal elements like kidnappers and cattle rustlers to join the peace process. The Secretary to the State Government, Ahmed Matani, who was accompanied by renowned Kaduna-based Islamic scholar Sheikh Ahmed Abubakar Gumi, said this would put an end to the security challenges bedeviling the state. He further enjoined the commanders to support government secure the release of passengers of the Niger State Transport Authority and students of Government Science College, Kagara, adding that the unfortunate incidents in the recent days call for sober reflection. Ahmad Matani reaffirmed that government would continue to ensure the security of lives and property through strengthening the security architecture of the state, hence the need for people to collaborate with government in its determination to rid the state of all criminal activities. SSG Ahmed Matani stressed the need for religious leaders and other stakeholders to embark on how to get the bandits, kidnappers and cattle rustlers to key into the peace initiatives of the government. Sheikh Ahmed Abubakar Gumi expressed optimism that dialogue with the bandits would put an end to the current insecurity in the state and country at large. Sheikh Gumi reminded the bandits that Islam is against taking the lives of innocent people and appealed to them to embrace peace by laying down arms. The Islamic cleric told the bandits that he would continue to discuss with the state government to explore whatever assistance and support governments would give to them with a view to achieving the set objectives. This outcome is very positive because uh, if you have warring factions and each faction is saying that uh, I have complaints and grievances which are very simple basic things, I think that is uh, hope. Some of the commanders in their separate remarks applauded the state government for the peace process, stressing that it would go a long way in restoring peace across the state. The bandits appealed to the state government to assist the release of their members arrested by security agencies and detained across the state for the peace process to thrive. The highlight of the occasion was the distribution of Islamic books to the bandits by Sheikh Ahmed Gumi so as to teach them the doctrine of Islam. Now, President Mohamedou Buhari has formally engaged Governor Dapo Abiodu of Ogun State over the recent violent attacks on headers in parts of the state. Governor Abiodun told journalists after a meeting that he was in the State House to present what he called the true account of the situation. State House correspondent Adam Sumbo has a report. 
Meeting President Muhammad Buhari for the first time this year, Governor Dapo Abiodun gave him detailed account of the unfortunate development. He said the attack on the Fulani Harders in Yewa North local government area of the state must have been perpetrated by bandits from the neighboring Bani Republic. And it appears as if the missing people must be in their custody. Up until now, all efforts to find these missing people have been in vain. I must say that the Fulanis have lived with us in Ugo State for hundreds of years peacefully. The Seriki Fulani from that particular corridor speaks Yoruba better than I do. Part of the problem we realize that we have is that of ethnic profiling. Criminals are criminals. Our people have had a problem with drawing a line between peaceful Fulani people who are traditionally herdsmen and bandits who are castle rustlers. Our media has not particularly helped us. It beats me why anyone would be in such a hurry to spread fake news. We don't have any other country but Nigeria. There must be stiff penalties for people that are propagating fake news because fake news is, is, is threatening the unity of this country. He described as gladdening that at the moment the gateway state is enjoying relative peace and commended his northern colleagues for joining him at a stakeholders meeting and genuinely supported his efforts at finding lasting solutions. I was so touched by their show and display of brotherhood. They spoke to the very core, individually and collectively, to everybody that was at that stakeholders meeting. It was an opportunity for everyone to tell us what was on their mind and what had truly transpired. Right now we're enjoying um, uh, relative peace. We intend to sustain that peace and I believe that um, if the right steps are taken, we can manage the situation and we can live together as brothers and sisters as we've always lived for so many years. The president was very impressed with um, how we've um, dealt with the matter. Um, he particularly commented that um, the steps we've taken are steps that he has always recommended, that we must have a joint stakeholders uh, committee that has farmers, herders, traditional rulers, um, and government, and that this committee should meet like once a month. The governor presented documentary evidence on the recent happenings in the state to the president. I will study. From the state house, Adam Usambu, NTA News. Moving on now to economic matters, a 50 billion naira economic expansion fund has been approved by the federal government aimed at boosting the nation's economy for sustainable future. The scheme titled From Pandemic to Prosperity is part of Nigeria's economic sustainability plan. The Chief Executive Officer Nigeria Export Promotion Council, Shegun Awolowo, disclosed this to newsmen after briefing President Mohamed Buhari on the implementation of the council's economic expansion scheme. State House correspondent again, Adam Sambo reports. Mr. President, in one of his speeches, I had said that, look, Nigeria must begin to behave as if we do not have oil. That single statement became our mantra at NEPC uh, to develop the Zero Oil Plan, which is an integral part of the national economy. During the meeting held behind closed doors, Mr. Shegun Awolowo told President Muhammad Buhari that a zero oil plan has received enormous support and buy-in with a high-powered committee on export already set up by the National Economic Council to drive it. The zero oil plan uh, has uh, postulated for the country 22 sectors where we think we can make enough foreign exchange revenue to rival oil. We need to scale up, and that is what I came to tell Mr. President, that we really need to scale up. In all these sectors, uh, we are positioning ourselves to take advantage of great potentials, in, particularly in the services sector, which is a $1 trillion sector. Uh, we need to get Nigeria involved. In the short and, and medium term, we are looking at the next 10 years, uh, where we can now get to uh, $30 billion uh, in terms of non-oil export and then take it uh, uh, from there. The economic expansion program, he explained, will go a long way in reducing joblessness in the country and the council is prepared to do whatever it takes towards ensuring that the economic expansion fund gets to deserving exporting companies in Nigeria. 
he was very del delighted and he congratulated me particularly for my persistence in 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 driving this and uh, i was i was pleased that he, he was taking notice of that and he has promised to continue to to support indeed the chief of staff was also there and uh, many things will will follow mr awolo used the opportunity to congratulate president muhammad buhari for nigeria's swift recovery from recession which he attributed to the leadership he provided towards building a resilient economy that can absorb global shocks. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Now, information and communications technology sector recorded the highest growth rate of all the sectors of the Nigerian economy in both the fourth quarter of 2020 and indeed the entire year, making it a major contributor to Nigeria's exit from recession. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson looks at the figures and how the economy is going digital. Surprising when the fourth quarter of 2020 report on Nigeria's gross domestic product released by the National Bureau of Statistics indicated that the ICT sector recorded the highest growth rate of all the sectors of the Nigerian economy in both the fourth quarter and the entire year of 2020. Nigeria's GDP grew at 0.11% year-on-year, indicating the first positive quarterly growth in the last three quarters, implying that Nigeria has strongly exited recession. The ICT sector was not only the fastest growing sector of the Nigerian economy in the last quarter, but also the only to have grown by double digits. At 14.70%, the ICT sector grew at a rate more than four times the agriculture sector, which was the next fastest growing sector of the fourth quarter of 2020, with a growth rate of 3.42%. The statistics also show that the ICT sector maintained its rapid growth rate in the overall year 2020 assessment, growing 12.90% or more than three times the water supply, sewage, waste management and remediation sector, which was next fastest growing sector of 2020 with a growth rate of 3.81%. Observers are of the opinion that the federal government's decision to make digital economy a priority is paying off with ICT sector becoming a catalyst for the diversification and growth of the nation's economy. Experts are also of the opinion that Nigeria can continue to grow her ICT sector as there are a lot of potentials therein. At the same time, focus on other non-oil sectors where the country has comparative advantages while deploying digital economy to enable and improve their processes. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. Thank you, Joseph. Now joining me in the studio to throw more light on ICT as the major contributor to Nigeria's exit from recession is the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami. You're welcome to Network News. Thank you very much. And congratulations for achieving such a feat when the whole world is grappling, you know, to maintain and, you know, bring their economy out of recession. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. I will extend the same to our boss, President Muhammad Buhari, for being the leader of the country and also giving us the opportunity to serve. Okay, thank you. Now yes, let's go pleasure. to the questions. Nigeria's exit from recession is a pinch indeed of good news, but what does this really portend for the ICT sector, you know, as a major contributor taking us out of recession? Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very important question. Uh, as you can see, we are highly excited for what uh, ICT sector has been doing to the economy of our country. Uh, firstly, if you look at it in the fourth quarter of 2020 the growth of ict is uh, unprecedented and uh, secondly if you look at the entire year of 2020 you will discover that the best performing sector in our economy is ict so there are two positions in the fourth quarter ict is on top in the entire year from january to december when it comes to economic growth ict is also on top and uh, this is a clear indication that we are on the right path in trying to diversify our economy by leveraging on ICT, most importantly, the digital economy sector. Okay, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to the fore the importance of technology in the economy. So where are we in the FG's quest for a digital, you know, Nigeria come 2020, 30? Uh, thank you very much. As you all know that uh, 
in 2019, to be specific, on the 28th November 2019, uh, based on the directives of uh, Mr. President, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, we developed the National Digital Economy Policy for a Digital Nigeria, in which we mentioned eight pillars. And our attempt in that policy is to ensure that from 2020 to 2030, within 10 years, the entire country is going to be digitalized, particularly when it comes to our economy. That was our initial plan. But when this pandemic came off in 2020, yes. around maybe March or April. February, March. Yeah, in Nigeria, I yes, mean, because yeah. this is the actual time we witnessed the uh, first case. Yeah. When that issue came up, we realized that that time was too long, 10 years. There was a need for us to ensure that we redouble our effort and fast track the implementation of the policy to achieve it before the uh, earlier arrangement of our 10 years. So now if you look at the eight pillars of our national digital economy policy and strategy for a digital Nigeria, what we earlier plan to achieve even by 2023, we were able to achieve it by the end of 2020 before starting 2021. And uh, that is why I have been saying that COVID-19 pandemic uh, is something that is a uh, negative and something that is also worrisome because we lost our beloved ones and many activities were shut down, restrictions and many more. But if you look at the pandemic with regards to ICT sector, it could be a blessing. Why? because the acceptance of ICT increased significantly. Mm. And at the same time, the implementation of our policies in place, we were able to achieve a lot within that period of time. In governance, you will discover that today, most of our most important meetings, mm. engagements, federal government policies, economy, and many more have been discussed virtually. Okay. Federal Executive Council is virtual. Largely, Almost National Economic now. Council is virtual <laughs> and many more. So I think COVID-19 pandemic really compelled us mm. to redouble our effort and ensure the implementation of the policies we have in place. Okay, while we bask in the euphoria of this success, what are the other low-hanging fruits waiting to be tapped, and what does the country intend to maximize technologically? Uh, firstly, if you look at it, Nigeria has been relying so much on oil and gas. And oil and gas has been very supportive to our economy for many years. But if you discover the global trends, if you look at the global trends, you will discover that many nations are running away from resource-based economy to knowledge-based economy. Because resource-based economy is something that you have no control over it. It could be possible divinely or naturally, you will discover in the next few years, there will be no oil in some parts of the country or in the entire country. This is possible. Mm -hmm. However, we are not praying for that. But when it comes to knowledge-based economy, it's not something the same with natural economy that will disappear or you have no control over it. When it appears, you utilize. When it doesn't appear, you have nothing to do. But knowledge-based economy is something that relies on your intellect, on your talent and many more. Mm -hmm. So because of this, many nations are leveraging on knowledge-based economy to diversify our economy, their economy. So in Nigeria, one of the most important sectors that the federal government identifies in order to diversify economy is digital economy sector, which is the ICT sector plus digital services. Mm -hmm. Both of them give you digital economy. So what we have been doing is an attempt to diversify our economy because a research of a management consulting firm owned by PwC shows that 10% digitalization of economy will significantly improve the gross domestic product of that nation. And this is what we have been witnessing. <laughs> and secondly, 10% broadband penetration based on the research of World Economic Forum, okay. <laughs> it could increase yes. your own GDP by a minimum of 0 0.6% oh. up to 6.8%. Thank you, Honorable Mr. We're we'll sort of running out of time. Oh, <laughs> Thank you so much for your input. We hope ICT, you know, Nigerians will key in into the sector more. Thank you so much for coming. I've been speaking with the it Honorable Minister pleasure, really. of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Ali Ibrahim Fantami. Thank you so much. It is for, my pleasure. For coming. Thank you. Now,
Turning our attention now to another major revenue earner, the customs. The Nigerian Customs Service is projecting a revenue generation of 1.465 trillion naira in its 2021 fiscal year. This was the submission of the Comptroller General of Nigeria Customs Service, Hamid Ali, during his 2021 budget defense before the Senate Committee on Customs, Exercise and Tariffs. Mobolaji Maribirin has the report. Presenting the achievements recorded by the agency in 2020, the Controller General of the Nigerian Custom disclosed that the initial revenue projection for 2020, which was 1.679 trillion naira, but later revealed to 1.380 trillion naira due to COVID-19 pandemic. He, however, said the agency generated the sum of 1.562 trillion naira in 2020. The revenue target for NCS in 2021 financial year is set at 1.465 trillion, consisting of 1.267 trillion for federation and 498.00 billion for non-federation. Members of the committee, while scrutinizing the proposed budget, advise the agency to do more in revenue generation. And, uh, it's a good thing that this reduction of this very good tariff which you have done, and it's a nice thing for all of us in this country, so that the idea of smuggling cars to Kotonou, thereby uh, destination Nigeria, will stop. Make sure you put scanners at all the borders. Those ports that are not working now, Try to put something there. The committee are joined with call on the service to clarify on funds allocated to it for recruitment within the last three years. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Moribiri, NTA News. Talking the economy now, Benny Adams is here for business news. A breath of fresh air keeps blowing. Sure. Congratulations. You're so very correct. Yeah. The economy is growing gradually. Well, Welcome to Business News. Experts attribute Nigeria's exit from recession to the impact of growth from the information and communications technology, agriculture, construction, and real estate services. The sectors accounted for about 54% of GDP in the fourth quarter of 2020. To further grow the numbers, an economist, Johnson Chuku, is of the view that insecurity needs to be handled. We need to look at those sectors that are growing and uh, call it them further. Probably the monetary authorities should allow the current 5% uh, intervention fund to uh, subsist in the near, in the immediate future, so that uh, those sectors that are benefiting from it, the manufacturing sector, the construction industry, the agricultural sector, uh, should actually enjoy more of that so that they, we can see faster economic growth rate. We need to address the issue of availability of FX, and we need to trigger consumer demand. If we do those things, we should see higher GDP growth rate. At the minimum, we should try to ensure our GDP growing above our population growth rate. And moving on to the capital markets, the NSC ASI dips by 0.63% to close the week negative as investors lose 130.2 billion naira week on week. Markets closed 40,186.70 basis points as against 0.63% depreciation recorded previously. Market breadth closed negative with livestock and 18 others gaining just as 20 others led by Stambik lost at the end of today's session and improved performance when compared with previous outlook. Market turnover closed a negative, moved down by 27.80% as against 74.56 uptick recorded in the previous session. FBNH, UCAP, and UBA were the most active to boost market turnover. Etana leads the list of active stocks that recorded impressive volume spike at the end of today's session. Well, that is business news. Jumai, it's nice doing business with you. Always a pleasure, Benny. Thank you. Now, moving on, Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters is advocating reforms of obsolete laws in the country to meet the current realities in the nation. This is a consensus at the screening exercise of commissioner nominees for the Nigeria Law Reform Commission to represent Southeastern Zone. Dayo Ogunshola reports. 
The presidential nominee is one of the full-time commissioners nominated by President Muhammadu Buhari to represent the South East Zone after the first nominee failed to appear before the committee. Chairman of the committee says solving issues facing Nigeria demands the laws of the nation must not only be strengthened but also be reformed to cater for the interests of all. In the event that your appointment is confirmed by the Senate, uh, we implore you to bring on board um, your, your antecedent as, as, a, as an activist, as a scholar, because the, the Nigerian Law Commission has a lot to do to ensure that, you know, the, the obsolete part of our law uh, is, is reformed. Usually very Other proud. members of the committee put the nominee to question, especially now to bring to bear his worth of experience if confirmed as commissioner of the Nigeria Law Reform Commission. All my writings, they are all writings that are geared towards reforming the law so as to make it conformable with the demands of present day society. The report of the committee will be forwarded to the Senate plenary for further legislative action. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. Coming ahead on the news, EFCC uncovers Underworld Academy location. Find out after this time out. Do stay. Hey guys, making music for you is so easy for me to do. But you know what else is super easy to do? Linking your NI to your glow line by dialing star 109 star NI and hash. Or I can call 109 from my glow line and follow the instructions. And if I don't want to call, call I can text my NI to 109. I can even visit glowworld.com slash NIN. And what if you've forgotten your NIN? All you have to do is dial star 346 hash and glow will help you remember it. Someone may ask, what if I haven't registered? All you have to do is go into the nearest Glow World and will help you register. It's that easy. So don't get disconnected from all the amazing voice and data offers from Glow. Linking your NI into your Glow lines is simple, safe, and 100% free with zero hassles. Nigeria is too big a nation to have just a few people making decisions. We all have to get involved. We all have to be heard. People always talk like there are two Nigeria, the government and the people, when in actuality the people are the government. Fixing Nigeria isn't a one-man program. It is all of ours collectively. Therefore, we must all get involved by participating actively in the system that brings forth good leadership. I would like to see a Nigeria where the bond we share is stronger than our tribal, gender, age, class, and religious differences. A Nigeria where everybody's voice counts. Get involved. Register now to join the All Progressives Congress. I am Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State, and I approve this message. For you to stand up for this world, you got to know what's up. Sabi waiting day ground. Then start to do your own. Get ginger to study every every. Because when you face see the different side of the world, anything they possible. BBC News for PJ. Make your life better. worried yeah I'll take care of it how do you manage to keep your fabric so white Wow and how do you manage to keep your house this clean I always use hypo to make our white clothes whiter and to keep our home clean and gem free your white fabrics whiter and your home free of illness causing viruses and germs with the disinfectant power of hypo bleach influenza it is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza virus 
Some of the symptoms include fever, headache, muscle or body aches, sore throat and a runny nose. In some cases, it can lead to death. The influenza virus is easily transmitted in crowded places such as schools and nursing homes. All age groups can be affected. However, pregnant women, children 6 months to the age of 5 years, the elderly, individuals with chronic medical conditions and health workers are at higher risk. The best way to prevent the flu is by getting a flu vaccine every year. Get your children vaccinated against influenza every year. Ask your healthcare professional for influenza vaccination in a clinic, hospital or pharmacy. The second wave of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is upon us. To safeguard lives of our people, government assigned the health protection regulations which makes wearing a face mask mandatory in public places. Wear a mask, keep social and physical distancing, avoid crowded places, wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water, and use hand sanitizer. COVID-19 is real. Do not be infected. Do not spread it. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. sharing the spoils in their last meeting, Southampton will be looking to secure all three points when they welcome the Blues to St. Mary's. This Saturday, it's Southampton versus Chelsea on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 1.30pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton, and Close Up, in association with Goal.com. Thanks for rejoining us. Now, with the present efforts by Nigeria to be at the center of global affairs, new envoys deployed to various missions across the world are tasked for a better performance in safety, welfare, and prosperity of Nigerian nationals. Usman Aliu has the details. This presentation of letters of commission signal new tasks to these envoys eight consuls general and five charge the affairs. Their engagements are not limited to enhancing economic cooperations or nurturing political relationships, but also for bolstering Nigeria's diplomatic influence. They are also expected to change the dark side in what appears to be affecting efficiency in some of the missions for a long time. The service delivery aspect uh, of your job, you know, uh, it's one of the issues where we've been taking uh, a real battering uh, in um, in the public domain. With poor service uh, to to Nigerians and non-Nigerians, you know, visiting the embassies and the missions, which is why, as I said, we want to now try and have a, a call center system so that you know people we can you know monitor more closely. The headquarters is going to pay a lot of attention to both rewards and sanctions. We are not going to keep quiet. Where we need to reprimand, we will be quick to do so. Where we need to reward, we will be quick to do so. The reforms that you have started in their unanimous submission, the new envoys pledged to accomplish the new tasks and make Nigeria's missions better than they were. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. The French government has restated the commitment to information exchange with Nigeria to aid in the fight against illicit traffic, drug trafficking in the two countries. Abdul Malik Hassan reports that France ambassador to Nigeria, Jerome Pasqueur, gave the assurance when he paid a visit to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency in Abuja. Establishing bilateral relationships with foreign nationals in the fight against illicit drug trafficking is a core mandate of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. This is because it is one of the key factors to achieving success in the war against illicit drug trafficking. Being a top guard in the fight against drug trafficking, the visit by France ambassador to Nigeria, Jérôme Pesky, to NDLEA is mutually beneficial. The meeting discussed ways the two nations can move forward in the war against drug pushers. The fight against drugs is a global problem. It cannot be solved country by country. We need international cooperation. This is what we have done in the past, but we are really willing to develop even more this cooperation with Nigeria now. And so we discuss the different possibilities to change of information. I'm glad to say that we have received tremendous 
assistance from, from the French um, in the areas of training, equipment, logistics, even some tactical uh, training inclusive, including language training. Guests say illicit drug use is a global scourge that requires collaborative efforts of all for progress. In Abuja, Abdumalik Hassan, NTA News. Operatives of the Abuja Zonal Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have uncovered another underworld academy for the grooming of internet fraudsters. The academy, located in Arab contractors' area of Papi Hills, a suburb of Abuja, was discovered when operatives acting on intelligence stumped the base on Thursday, February 18, and arrested 27 internet fraud suspects. The coordinator of the academy is said to be a 30-year-old Emmanuel Clement, and his student are mostly young school leavers, ladies inclusive, within the age of 18 and 25 years. Items recovered from the suspects include a Toyota Venza car, 30 mobile phones and one laptop. In a tweet, the EFCC said the suspects will be charged to court as soon as investigation is concluded. Now talking judiciary, the Federal High Court in Abuja has deferred its ruling on the bail application filed by chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Maina. Olabode Ariya reports that the defendant was in court. Abdul Rashid Maina, who is being tried alongside his company, Common Input Nigeria Limited, was to open his defense when his counsel, Sonny Katu SEN, moved a motion for minor to be granted bail on health grounds and moved another motion to withdraw his early application to recall some of the prosecution witnesses. The prosecution counsel, Salisu Abubakar, however, opposed the bail application on the grounds that minor had earlier jumped bail. He added that minor absconded from Nigeria to Chad and Niger republics, claiming he went for a knee surgery, whereas his medical report indicates otherwise. Maina is facing a 12 count charge of 3.1 billion naira pension fraud. In another development, the court has summoned the civil society organizations shortlisted to monitor implementation of the $311 million Abacha loot. Justice Ian Gekwo issued the order after listening to the arguments from some aggrieved civil society organizations who felt shortchanged. Counsel to the plaintiff, Daniel Boala, told the court that the selection breached the provisions of the Public Procurement Act and as such should be discountenanced. Both cases have been adjourned to February 24. In Abuja Labo Darewa, NTA News. Effective border policing requires greater commitment by officers of the Nigeria Immigration Service to coordinate safe and regular mobility at the country's border while ensuring protection of migrants' rights. Comptroller General in Nigeria Immigration Service Mohamed Babandidi said this at the inauguration of Forward Operation Base in Ephraya Etong local government area of Cross River State. Udwak Etim has details. The Nigeria Immigration Service is saddled with the responsibility of protecting the country's borders and interlands. Hence, the need for comfortable control centers to address the challenges officers face in combating cross-border banditry, smuggling of illegal migrants, and trafficking in persons. The establishment of the forward operation base in border frontiers across the country for effective border policing is apt. Hence, the inauguration of this facility in Ephraya, a tung legal government area of Cross River State, with adequate room capacity for staff accommodation. The forward operation base, our officers have direct communication to every part of our country. Our radio communication is available, they have patrol vehicles to go around, and uh, they are working also alongside, together with Operation Sweeper response to border drill. Governor Ben Ayade, represented at the event, believes the base will enhance national security. The state government had donated a complete building at Ogoja for you to start off with a passport office in Kosovo State. The facility of the Nigeria Immigration Service is expected to improve the productivity of officers while achieving orderly mobility at the country's borders. Uduak Etam, NTA News.
Now to Infrastructural Development, Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola says road construction and development will continue to be given priority by Buhari administration in view of its role in the social economic development of the country. This is as inaugurates the newly completed Federal Protechnic Nasra Road. Guser Peve has the details. Since establishment in 1983, this is the first time Federal Polytechnic Nasrawa is directly benefiting from the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing Road Intervention Project. The two-kilometer road infrastructure, according to the Minister of Works and Housing, represented was born out of desire to bridge infrastructural deficits in academic institutions. We we'll go around the country, we we'll see what is happening, the road network, we we'll see where we need to intervene. And government is really doing a lot. Uh, a lot of resources have been pumped into these uh, road constructions. We hope that we we'll continue to have this more. Director of the Polytechnic, Dr. Abdullahi Al Hassan Ahmed alongside lecturers and students, loud intervention describing it as critical to knowledge generation. I must confess to you all that the federal government has secured an opportunity from so many challenges with this construction of two We thank Almighty God for making it possible under the administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari for seeing it worthy of awarding this uh, two kilometer road to the federal political minister. The two kilometer road begins from the main gate linking to major structures within the polytechnic premises. From Nasarawa local government of Nasarawa state, Nguse PV, NTA News. Thank you, Nguse. Adiola joins us from Lagos with the next set of reports. Hello, Adiola. Jumai, the Lagos Economic Summit has ended with a unanimous decision to invest more in information technology, youth-oriented policies and programs with a view to harnessing the full potential of young people for overall development of a state. Musa Toliat has the details. It was three days of intensive deliberations aimed at showcasing the opportunities and analyzing the challenges of achieving full economic potentials of the state. Governor Babajide Sonwulu said recommendations of the summit, especially on youth development, will be given priority to aid implementation for the vision of Lagos State to come to fruition. Governor Sonwulu and his counterpart from Kaduna State, Nasir El Wifai, joined the economic summit virtually from Abuja. I count on the private sector to be aggressive in seeking out opportunities to partner with us and to support the Lagos State government. Government alone cannot make it happen. And all of us as governors, as Nigerians, uh, associate with Lagos and support its growth and development. Presentations from various plenary and breakout sessions were integral part of the summit. The state deputy governor presented an 11-point communique on the six thematic areas of discussion at the economic summit. The summit recommended that government continues to provide an enabling environment and support of technology ops across Lagos. Governor Babajide Sonwolu is uh, very serious about this, bringing back uh, Igweti after a four-year break. There's so much opportunity in carbon credits. There's so much opportunity in pollution control. Governments obviously cannot do it alone. The 21st Lagos Economic Summit Tag in Betty 2021 had six thematic plenary sessions driven by 146 speakers and panelists with more than 10,000 physical and virtual participants from within and outside the country. In Lagos, Musa Tolian, NTA News. Now talking emergencies, Lagos, Nigeria's commercial nerve in the year 2020 remained the center of attention due to a myriad of issues. The state had more than its fair share of social, economic and security challenges which took a toll on residents. Imole Otokede examined the trend of incidents that led to emergency situation and response by relevant agencies. Data according to the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency from January to December 2020 shows that a total of 1,024 emergency cases were recorded in Lagos. If you look at the emergency that occurred in 2020 compared to the one that occurred in 2020, 2019, it's greatly reduced until October during the COVID. NSAS will start 
experiencing another form of emergency. Top on the list were accidents involving trucks and tankers to the tune of 411 cases, while road accidents involving vehicle and falling tankers had 331 cases. 80% of emergencies that involve articulated vehicle, you will discover that it's just carelessness, recklessness on the part of the driver. Fire outbreaks as a result of gas and pipeline explosions, as well as truck and other vehicles, totaled 156 cases. On the norm, you don't allow a gas plant to be within a residential area because eventualities can come up and such a thing and even more fatalities. 12 cases of gas, pipeline and oil spillage emergencies were recorded in the year on the review. The state also witnessed 36 cases of building collapse, as well as 57 cases of medical emergencies, including suicide, coronavirus, among other occurrences. The months of August, September and December have the most prevalence of cases, which occurred mostly within Koshofe, Ikeja, Alimosho and Lagos Island local government areas. Most of the vandalism occurs in that area. And right now, because of the activities of our volunteers, the information are getting out because we told them the impact of vandalism on their community. The spate of these emergency incidents continues to ignite flames of worry among relevant agencies. There is a growing apprehension that with the effect of the Hamilton haze now hitting Lagos, these cases might surge if residents are not careful. In Lagos, in Mali today, NTA News. And that's a bit from Lagos. We'll go on another break. The news will continue shortly. Get your limited edition packs now before the final whistle blows. Wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri Abimi Owiri. Better school for last giddy. Not be all this on a rugged, yeah, yes, school for each. I mean, I know, I know, I know, know for you. Sega, it's called Oja Village. Can you see? We know happy at all, at all. Yeah, at all. And I know that even you too, you are getting a lot of orders. Too. Hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. She was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? <laughs> Year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not even I talk with that now. Not for me, not for me because of for meeting Southampton will be looking to secure all three points when they welcome the Blues to St Mary's this Saturday it's Southampton versus Chelsea on the Premier League live showing on the network service of the NTA from 1 30 p.m. the Premier League live is brought to you by Axis Bank but by Jebu Lipton and close up in association with gold.com 
Welcome back. More chieftains of the All Progressives Congress are revalidating their membership in the ongoing exercise, just as new members are trooping to join the party. Govan Shaji compiled this report on the registration in some states. Kano Yunusa Hassan Barao reports that Majority Leader House of Representatives Al Hassan Dodogua revalidated his membership at his word, where he urged the people to continue to support the party and ensure its victory at all levels in 2023 and beyond for them to enjoy more dividends of democracy. This time around, we are establishing an online embassy. We are establishing a networking, a system that will allow us by statistics to be able to determine the strength and the number of our population right at the polling unit. Other members and officials at both state and federal levels also revalidated their membership at their words. The president has said that this is an opportunity for young people to take ownership of the party at the ground level. To come out and pass, show their happiness, to show their willingness to continue to support our government. And from Gusau, Haliru Muhammad Omar reports that the first civilian governor of the state, Senator Ahmed Sani Rufai, has revalidated his membership after the controversy that trailed his participation in the exercise. And I want to express my gratitude and thanks to Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief who has stood by the APC and made sure that everything has gone right. In Jalingo, Adamo Haruna Adams captured more people joining the progressive strain in Taraba, among whom are prominent religious leaders. So I am looking at 2023, that it will be the year that God will bring a change. So party that can fight for a right of a common man is a party that Christians are supposed to be there. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NT News. And now sports. Time to take a look at some trending stories in the world of sports. I am Badi Adeleye. Nigeria's senior men's basketball team, the Tigers, wrapped up their 2021 Afro Basket qualifiers on Friday with a 76 to 56 points win over Mali. The result means the 2015 Afro Basket champions finished the qualifiers unbeaten, winning six out of six games. Still on national teams, Super Falcons coach Randy Wardrum expects his side to put up a much improved performance when they take on Uzbekistan in their second match at the Goat City Invitational Tournament in Turkey Saturday evening. The nighttime African champions beat Seska Moscow 1-0 in their opening match on Thursday. I was actually pretty pleased uh, overall considering uh, the team has not been together in, in, in over a year. Back home. The Nigeria Professional Football League enters match day 11 this weekend. Two matches are scheduled for Saturday with a match between Aqua United and Plateau United live on NTA. And to the Premier League now where Chelsea will be hoping to make it six straight wins in all competitions when they play away to Southampton at St. Mary's on Saturday with the match live on NTA from 1 in the afternoon. Liverpool will take on Everton in the Merseyside Derby also on Saturday with Asna and Manchester City trading tackles on Sunday. And to a bit of tennis now, Daniel Medvedev beat Stefano Sesepas as the last four of the Australian Open on Friday to reach his second major final. The informed Russian won 6 4 6 2 7 5 over his Greek opponent to set up a final meeting with Novak Djokovic on Sunday. And that will be all on Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye. President Mohamedou Buhari has commiserated with Governor Ifai Okoa of Delta State and his entire family on the passing of their father, Sir Arthur Okore Okoa. In a letter of condolence to the governor on behalf of the government and people of Nigeria, the president, the president described the late Pa Okoa as one who lived a life dedicated to the service of God and humanity as a teacher, school administrator, devout Christian and community leader. The president said he will be fondly remembered for his meritorious service to Delta State and indeed Nigeria and urged him and other members of the family to find inspiration and solace in the fulfilled life he lived. 
President Muhammad Buhari has condoled with family and friends, the government and people of Katsina State on the demise of Abdullahi Diko Inde, the immediate past Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shewu, says President Buhari took note of his past service to the nation and prayed Allah to accept, to accept the good deeds and forgive the sins of the late Diko Inde and grant his family the fortitude to bear the law. The remains of former National Secretary of the People's Redemption Party, PRP, Dr. Junaid Mohammed, has been laid to rest at Taruni Graveyard in Kanu. Aminu Umar reports. The funeral prayer led by Chief Imam al Furqan Central Mosque was attended by family members and close associates, including former military administrator of Kaduna State General Lawl Jafari Isa. Dr. Junaid Muhammad died on Thursday in Kano after a brief illness at the age of 71. A trained medical doctor turned politician was a federal legislator and minority whip during the Second Republic. He left behind his wife and four children. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News. And that's the news tonight. Thanks so much for your time. Good night.